Hey, what's going on guys? The Bearded Baron bringing you guys another Dead by Daylight video. Now today's video is going to cover 10 tips to instantly improve your survivor gameplay, leading to more pips and more escapes. But without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, starting us off with tip number one is always be productive. The average match in Dead by Daylight is roughly 15 minutes depending on a few factors such as the skill of the other survivors, the skill of the killer, and the map. During that time, it's important to be as productive as possible because although you may die to the killer, pipping or safety pipping is still a victory in and of itself. Whenever possible, always be looking for something to do, whether that's saving a teammate, working on a generator, opening a chest, cleansing a totem, or looping the killer. Making sure you utilize your time wisely can often be the difference between pipping and depipping. Tip number two is knowing when and where to drop pallets. One of the largest tools in a survivor's arsenal are the pallets that the entity has left scattered around the map and are vital to the success of all the survivors. Dropping pallets too quickly too early will lead to a giant dead zones that survivors won't be able to escape from. Another common problem new players have is dropping a pallet when being hit. This is counterproductive for two reasons. One, you counteract the slight speed boost that you get from being hit, and two, now that the pallet is thrown, if the killer breaks the pallet, you won't be able to utilize it again. A general rule of thumb is to skip every other pallet you come across while looping a killer. This helps in slowing down how many pallets are being used, as well as presents dead, prevents dead zones from forming. Tip number three is learning how to look behind you when running. Looking behind you while running sounds easier than it actually is, but imagine keeping an eye on a killer that wants to hook you while running forward without running into any obstacles or other teammates. This one is going to take some practice, so jumping into a kill your friends match to run some of the common loops while looking behind you is advised. The reason this tip is so vital is it provides survivors with crucial knowledge as to the killer's position, distance to the survivor, whether or not the killer is trying to mind gain you, and or left the, ch the chase entirely. Being able to look behind you is vital to not only reaching red rings, but staying there. Tip number four is understanding the killer's abilities and perks. Every killer in Dead by Daylight is unique and brings a slightly different approach when facing against them. Knowing what ability the killer is going to utilize against you allows you to formulate a strategy to combat them. For example, nurse mains often rely on a line of sight to blink to a survivor. Using large walls or objects to break that line of sight might mean the difference between a chase lasting 5 gens and not 5 seconds. Understanding killer perks will also give you an understanding of how that killer is going to be played and what debuffs to expect during the match. Going into each match with as much knowledge as possible will lead to more escapes and more pipping. Tip number five is always have an escape plan. Whether the match is just starting or your team is trying to finish the last generator, having an escape plan is a great way to avoid unnecessary hits from poor planning. This means looking around while working on a generator, spotting vault points, or pallets nearby to utilize if the killer comes in your direction. Oftentimes, I'll even reposition myself on a generator just so that way I'm in a better position to a pallet or a vault point. Knowing what's around you is a great way to extend chases as well, especially later on during a match. Tip number six is to focus on completing generators first before working on secondary objectives. Even the best killer mains in the world will have a hard time going against a team that prioritizes generators over everything else. This is because the more generators completed means the more pressure on the killers and makes them more likely to make mistakes. Killer perks and killers themselves are designed to slow the game down by debuffs, hooking, and killing survivors, so the more time spent in a match, odds start to shift in the killer's favor. Being efficient at completing generators will lead to more successes over time. Tip number seven is knowing how to loop a killer. Even if it's something that you don't particularly care about in the game, being able to loop the killer for even 30 seconds does wonders for your teammates. 
This is almost half the amount of time required to finish a generator solo or save a teammate from the hook. Knowing the different map tiles and how to loop them makes looping a killer much easier to do even at red ranks. I'll leave a video here showing the most common map tiles and how to loop them efficiently. Additionally, when running killers around pallets, it's important to remain as close as you can to the object that you're looping. Taking wider paths will ultimately lead to a killer being able to catch up to you faster and in chases faster as well. Tip number eight is practicing different vault speeds. In Dead by Daylight, there are three different vault speeds, slow, medium, and fast vaults. Slow vaults require the most amount of time, but don't alert the killer to you vaulting the window. Medium and fast vaults are completed by running at a particular vault point, but the difference between them is the difference in angle used when vaulting. To achieve fast vaults, you must be at least a few feet away from the window and look directly at it when vaulting. Hitting the window at any other angle will result in a medium vault instead. Also, being too close to the vault point when you start running can also lead to a medium vault. It is best to hop into a few Kill Your Friends matches to practice the different vaults before heading into an actual match. Tip number 9 is starting to work on generators closer to the middle of the map at the start of the match. Many times, survivors will start working on whichever generator is closest to them at the start of the match, but this can work against you, as killers know that survivors work on outside generators and can lead to a dreaded three generator scenario, making it almost impossible to finish that last generator. Instead, walk towards the center of the map and begin working there first. Finishing the middle generators forces the killer to travel further distances between generators when patrolling, and essentially cuts the map into two halves. This makes it easy to know if one or two generators finish on one side of the map, move to the other side to avoid three genning yourself. Tip number 10 is to remember that Dead by Daylight is simply a game. I know that many times DBD is considered to be very toxic and depending on the teammate slash killer that you get, it can almost seem unbearable. Take those games in stride and remember before doing anything toxic, recall how you felt when you were on the receiving end of said toxic actions or comments. All right, guys, that's my list. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for future content. Also, let me know which tip you think is the most important for survivors to instantly improve their, improve their gameplay. Overall, I hope this video was informative and I'll see you guys in the fog.